Hey guys, it's Chad's Board Gaming here, and today we got a little something special for our first video on this channel. So this channel is more of a board gaming thing, war gaming, um, tabletop board game stuff. I'm gonna cover a lot of that stuff. Axis and Allies, Global War, um, Warhammer 40K, stuff like that. That's really what I like to do. I also like to play a lot of video games. Uh, pretty much today we're gonna be playing Global War 1914. Or this is the, it's 1914 Global War, but it's Global War 1914. Maybe the guys over at Historical Board Gaming. Um, those guys are awesome. This is a really cool game. I'm really excited to show you guys. Pretty much, it's, uh, ever heard of Glo Global War? Um, if you've heard of Global War, this is the World War One version. Now, there's some stuff that may not be accurate because this thing is the size of my table and is not big enough to fit all the pieces so I had to cut all the numbers down in half or do my best guessing to kind of balance this thing out so we got our Ottoman Empire here Austria Hungary Germany Italy France and Britain United States we got Australia on over here France more Germany Russia so yeah this is a very cool game now if you've never heard of Global War. Um, this is a very, very cool game. Um, it's made by the guys at Historical Board Gaming. I'll put their link down in the description. They do war gaming from World War One all the way up to 2025. And speaking of 2025, as this video is going up, Global War 2025, which is a modern kind of Axis and Allies game, just came out. I already ordered it. It's so cool. So excited to play it. And that's what we're going to be playing next week. But uh, one thing I will say, this is such a cool game too. There's all the different factions in here. Now there, um, you'll notice there isn't any aircraft carriers, bombers, because I kind of just did some balancing on my own, just to kind of make everything function properly. Um, really just don't have a lot of space for parts in, in the first place. So uh, we're going to be doing a test today, or playing the game pretty much. Um, using the rules and some modified home rules just because the game isn't finished yet and we're gonna give it a trot shot so I'll see you guys in a minute once the first turn is over and uh, we'll see what happens alright so we just finished up the central powers turns um, they go first in this game so we got a couple of things so I don't have any actual markers for the Ottomans so right here I actually just used a um, Japanese token because of the Japanese pieces um, but from the looks of it, as you'll kind of see, the Germans took down here, kind of, and one thing, there's our dead pile, you'll kind of see that, um, there are a lot of British people that were killed during this turn. Um, then we had, uh, the Germans take Belgium up there, and then also take out the fleet up there in the North Sea. Um, the Germans did that, and then the Germans had their a ship here, and they tried to attack there, and they lost. Um, and the Ottoman Empire tried to take control of the Suez, and they were going to attack Sinai, the Sinai Peninsula here. Didn't go so well for them, so they had to move their forces down from up there, and they've moved troops from Constantinople. Nothing really happening over here so much. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, in the original rules, it has the Solomon Islands as um, British on the map, but in the actual rules, it's German. So, did that. So, uh, we just finished that up. And then we also had some gains taken. The uh, Hungar um, Austro-Hungarians took over uh, Romania here. Same thing, I'm using an Italy token for them because I don't have any tokens for them. So the Germans and them had a pretty good success this first run. They also took out a couple of ships up there and are currently in the lead for the most kills at this point. But that might change in the next few rounds here, so stay tuned. Alright guys, the uh, first turn is over here, so we had a lot of stuff to go over. So the Australians picked up their troops from here, started moving them over, because uh... You'll see in a second, the Brits need the help. So we got some infantry on there, a cruiser and destroyer. Germans had pushed into, took out those guys. 
the British retreated back into the Belgian Congo, and troops from Cairo and Alexandria started moving south. And then we're moving this cruiser that was down by the Falklands, or sorry, Ascension Island, and they're moving up to help out in the north. So the Brits lost like a whole fleet, and this fleet right here is actually completely rebuilt. We completely rebuilt that. Um, and the, the British really didn't do too much this round because they've kind of stuck. They're really just stuck in this movement phase, but they were able to move some troops around battle some people out um, that's kind of what our losses are French had a lot of losses in naval combat pretty much instantly because they got all the German and um, Ottoman and Austro-Hungarian troops that are kind of in the Mediterranean there and uh, the Brits are starting to move out and this next turn is gonna get pretty intense so that I didn't reinforce Aiden right there um, because if they lose control of the Sinai Peninsula, they can't get through there and they can lock it down from one side. So, and we got a lot of troop movement. The Russians uh, took out a lot, actually. They took out the fleet that was outside of um, their territory, Germans ter Germany's territory in China. And um, moving their fleet down, they're going to start an amphibious assault there, take those guys out. They are retreating because of the Ottomans' forces push um, into right into Britain right there, Persia. Uh, they fall out, back out of Tehran and Persia, and they're kind of starting to set up defensive positions so that they can't push north. Um, get a lot of troop movement though, and really looking very even. I, at first, it looked very one-sided from just because of how the British troops and stuff that are in here. But it definitely looks pretty even so far. The United States hasn't even done anything because they really aren't even in the war for a few turns yet. They don't enter in the war for three turns. So, but yeah, pretty interesting what's going on so far. Um, really interested to see what happens in the next turn. Um, so, if you guys uh, check back in later, we'll have uh, turn two going. And uh, hopefully, you guys have a good day. Thanks for checking out the video.